So remember we were proving this conjecture in our last video. We were trying to prove that A union B cross C is equal to A cross C union B cross C. And so we proved the first part, but now we're going to prove that A cross C union B cross C is contained in A union B cross C. So again, we're going to start with our outline of our proof here. So what would the start of this proof be? The start would be, I'm going to choose an element in the left hand side here but this is a union of cross products, so my element should be an ordered pair. Be an A cross C union B cross C. And then what am I trying to get to? I'm trying to get to that this element is in this right hand set. So the end of my proof would be that xy is in a union b cross c. So now we're going to fill in, well, before we do that, what does this mean? This means x is in a union b and y is in c. So let's go forward now. I know x would have to be in a cross c or x would have to be in b cross c. And because I have an or here, we're going to proceed with cases. Case one is that, or sorry, not x. I should have said x, y here. x, y, and x, y. So x, y is in a cross c. That's my first case. And my second case will be that it's not in A cross C. So this means X is in A and Y is in C. But if X is in A, then X is in, that means it's in A union B. So now I have that X is in A union B and Y is in C which is exactly what I needed to get to. Over here, because x comma y is not in a cross c, that means it has to be in b cross c. x is in b and y is in c. But since x is in b, I know that x is in a union b. So now I have that x is in A union B and y is in C. So again, that's what I needed to get to. So I finished the outline of this proof. Now I just need to write the formal proof, which I'm going to do now. And again, when you're doing this, reference back to your outline. So I'm going to suppose x and y is in A cross C union B cross C. Then this element xy is in A cross C or this element is in B cross C. We proceed. two cases, and those two cases being that xy is in A cross C, or xy is not in A cross C. So case one, assume xy is in A cross C, then x is in A and y is in C. Since x is in A, x is in 
a union B since X is a, a union B and Y is in C XY will be in a union B cross C that's the end of case one now case two assume that XY is not in a cross C but since I know that XY is either in a cross C or XY is in B cross C but I knew that it's not in the first set it has to be in the second one but that tells us that X is in B and Y is in C since X is in B, X is in a union B, then X is in a union B, and Y is in C. So we've established that XY is in a union B cross C, and I'm going to say in either case, XY is in a union B cross C. Therefore, A cross C union B cross C is a subset of A union B cross C. And I've completed the second part of my proof. And so because we've completed the first and the second part of the proof, we've established that these two sets are equal.